complex, but I want to go back over here to the cattle first, Oliver. Um, this fat cattle market, that February contract doesn't get too far away from that 120 level. And there are some that are saying, yeah, there's some winter weather that's affecting parts of the feedlot regions. Uh, but it doesn't look like it's major, major winter weather that'll slow down trade or, or really take a lot of weight off these cattle. Right. The, the winter weather is nothing uh, extreme, as you had mentioned, and at the end of the day, it is winter. So that is to be expected, and I think largely priced in in the futures market for the most part. Uh, now, looking at some of the technicals, April, that's going to be where a lot of the volume is. We kind of tripped below uh, the, the recent lows yesterday, maybe a stop hunt down to 118, but really weren't able to get much of a pop off of that, which is a, a little bit of a caution flag. We we're looking for a little bit more of a relief rally, but the inability to get that after such a deep discount over the past two weeks is a little bit concerning. We're looking to potentially go fill that gap at 123, 124, but that's drifting further and further away. And it appears that the funds are just continuing to kind of liquidate their long position and square things up um, here in the very near term. Now, feeder cattle, as you had mentioned, gaining a little bit more ground here, but really failing up at that 136.90 for that March contract, which is a 50% retracement from the recent range. If we can't get a consecutive close out above here, I, I think the bears still have the advantage to break below the low end of the range at 134, I think really opens the door for some accelerated selling pressure, unfortunately. Yeah, but over in the fats, there's still quite a few longs in that market. If all of a sudden they wanted to get out, uh, that market could still tumble. That, and that's the big concern, and we've been talking about that for a while, really, before we broke down, is the risk of long liquidation. The fund's still long, about 50,000 contracts call. It's not overly aggressive to the long side, so I do think the downside is probably a little bit more limited from these levels, and we'd really like to be buyers if we could get another $1 to $2 lower on these fat cattle. There's a lot of technical support uh, down near 115.92 to 116 in that April contract. That's the gap all the way back from September 20th, so if we were to break and, and kind of test that that gap, I think that would represent pretty good value on the first test. I think there's still a lot of pent up uh, demand here once we get this coronavirus thing behind us. The coronavirus is a big wild, wild card, and we have the Fed chair uh, speaking here this morning as we speak with regards to the potential impact in China. Now that could potentially spill into the U.S. economy. So it's oh. a very fluid situation. Okay, that's a very good point, too. Okay, thank you very much for bringing all of that up today. Always good to check in with you, Mr. Slope. Oliver, uh, Oliver there at the edge of the trading floor in Chicago. All right. Okay. A lot of excitement building up. Thank yes, you very much, John.